I'm Divya Chauti and I'm going to deal with MWLAM. So today we are going to uh, perform the experiment called as uh, measurement of waveguide parameters or waveguide parameters measurement. This is the name of the experiment. So aim of the experiment is to measure the parameters which are related to the waveguide and uh, we are well known that there are five most important parameters that were related with the waveguide. They are nothing but guide wavelength and uh, phase velocity, group guide velocity and uh, free space wavelength and cutoff wavelength. So these five parameters we are going to measure by making use of this particular experiment. So now come on to the experiment. So initially we need to take all the four precautions which we are following for all the four experiments and beam voltage should be at minimum position and uh, you need to vary the rippler voltage in such a way that in this ERY you should get the maximum V peak to peak of the square wave. So I set my rippler voltage uh, to its maximum and I got my maximum output in this ERO. So here I set the rippler voltage at 253 volts. I'm just taking a note of it. My rippler, initial rippler voltage that I have taken is 253 volts. So for that rippler voltage, here in this uh, CRO, I just got the output like 1, 2, 3, uh, 3.6 into 0 0.5. 3.6 into 0 0.5 volts. That is nothing but uh, 3.6 into 0 0.5. So 1.8 volts. For a uh, maximum rippler voltage of 253 volts, I got the voltage value as 1.8 volts. So now what we need to do is, so now uh, you can see this particular section and you can recollect that this we can call it as a slotted section. So here what we are going to do is, we are going to move this slotted section towards the left. And so whenever we are moving this slotted section, you just uh, keep your eye on the output of the CRO. You can see the small variation. You don't see the uh, large variation, but you can observe only the small variation. And that variation can be either the wave get compressed or the output of the wave can be increased. That means wave can be either compressed like this or it can be incremented like this. But that amount of variation will be very less uh, which is going to vary when we are varying the position of this slotted section. So here what we need to do is say for example uh, in order to calculate lambda g that is nothing but the guide wavelength practically the formula for guide wavelength is lambda g is equals to 2d. And what exactly D, D is nothing but D2 minus D1. And from where we can get D2 and D1 from this particular slotted section. Here it has a scale of a centimeters range. So when you vary this, there will be a changes. So here D1 and D2 you need to measure in such a way that you need to consider two successive increments or two successive decrements in the output. Say for example, if you are... Uh, varying this and if you observe that the output was increased now when it was increased now try to note down what is the distance here and now still you move it there can be increment or decrement but you should not consider both whatever the first value that we have taken we have taken the first value for the increment so you need to move it in such a way that again we should observe one more increment in between there can be a decrement but at that decrement you should not take the values only at the increment because you can take the values at either two successive increments or at two successive decrements as I have taken the first value at increment so I need to consider the second value only at the increment itself so whatever I explained I am just trying to uh, implement right now I am moving this knotted section slowly you just uh, keep your eye on the output uh, it is going to vary see it started incrementing a little bit you can observe that it was incrementing slowly. Yeah, maximum it was uh, incremented to this particular uh, value and beyond that if I am moving it is going to decrease. So I am just stopping it here and now you just uh, come and see this scale. See here, here we have uh, 10 and 0 and this is the centimeter square that we have. Uh, so wherever this 0 is uh, making contact with this particular scale that value we have to take down so here this zero is contacting this particular line so that line value is nothing but 
8.6 you can observe that very clearly zero is making contact with this particular line and while you are taking this line uh, don't uh, calculate it from this left hand side you need to get it from the right hand side because 6 7 8 9 10 it was incrementing so from this end you need to calculate so when you calculate from this end zero is making contact with this particular line and this line value is 8.6 so now i am making a note of d1 as 8.6 my d1 value is 8.6 and i observed this 8.6 centimeters we are going to measure that in centimeters and i observed this 8.6 for increment so now i am moving this knotted section for the observation of one more increment you just keep your eye on the output i need one more increment but now it is decreasing so we should here we should not consider the decrement value because the first value that i have taken is an increment value so it is decreasing still i need to move it till i get one more increment yeah now it started incrementing it is increasing so we need to take the increment only we need to take at maximum at which distance it is increasing it was increasing the variation will be very less ma we need to keep an eye yes that's it a further it's not increasing so i'm stopping this slotted section here and now come and see what is the uh, distance now so now zero is in contact with this particular scale at this particular point and this is nothing but the 10.6 so this is going to be your d2 so d2 that i observed is 10.6 centimeters so here we need to calculate d what d is d is nothing but d2 minus d1 that is nothing but 10.6 minus 8.6 so how much we are going to get 10.6 minus 8.6 so the distance that we got is 2 centimeters so from this value you can calculate your guide wavelength that is nothing but 2d 2 into the d value is 2 so that is nothing but 4 centimeters so for this particular voltage the output voltage is 1.8 and you can see the variations in output at these two distances and when you take the difference of these two distances you are going to get d and when you multiply d with 2 you are going to get your guide wavelength as 4 centimeters and here we have one more column called as frequency so now you need to observe the dip what is what is dip is i already explained dip is nothing but output will compress and again it will come back to its original position so for that uh, we need to set this to its initial position and now i am going to vary this frequency meter in such a way that i should observe the dip you just keep your eye on the output and varying the frequency meter it should compress and should get back to its original position yes here it was compressed and it come back to its original position so here i am trying to note down my uh, frequency and the frequency that is uh, 10 point after 10.65 it is at third line so i am just making note of it third line after 10.65 and this third line is in between 10.65 and 10.7 so like that i have noted down the frequency so i am going for the one more uh, uh, values after that i will tell you how to calculate the remaining parameters with the obtained now i am varying uh, regular frequency before i vary the regular frequency the frequency meter should be set to its initial position and now i am varying the regular frequency see you can see that there are changes in the output it now it is a middle value zero so now i should get one more maximum value yeah here i got the maximum value so at a voltage of 195 at a voltage of 195 dipolar voltage i got the uh, maximum output i am just trying to note down its value and it is 1 2 3 3 into 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 so i am going to get 1.5 volts so in the same way we need to vary this slotted section i am just varying it it was decrementing and now it started increasing uh, it is increasing to this particular level only so at this particular place 
uh, I got the value as 8.7 that is nothing but T1 is 8.7 centimeters so now I, I am moving it for uh, another increment it should decrease and again it should increase here I am considering two successive increments in the output yeah and uh, here the value is uh, 11.2 11.2 centimeters so the d value will be 11.2 minus 8.7 uh, that will be around 2.5 centimeters so as it is 2.5 the lambda g will be 2 into 2.5 that is nothing but 5 centimeters and here i am noting down the frequency as usually to observe we need to observe a dip in the output yes here is the diff, so its value is 11.35, the frequency that I got is 11.35 gigahertz, 11.35 gigahertz, so like this you need to vary your uh, ripple voltage and you need to observe the output and by varying this slotted section you need to note down d1 d2 and after getting the d you we can get the guide wavelength once if we got the guide wavelength then we can calculate the remaining parameters also so now i am uh, switching on the power supply and i'll explain how should we calculate the remaining four parameters of the uh, waveguide and just switching it off now if we move on to the calculations see i'm just going for the second values you can no problem you can take the first values also so from the second values i got the lambda g value as uh, lambda g i got it as uh, 5 centimeters and i got the frequency as uh, 11.35 gigahertz so here giga is nothing but i think you all know it giga is 10 power 9 so now here you can calculate lambda naught first of all because lambda naught formula is c by f and where c is the velocity of the light and c value is 3 power 3 into 10 power 8 or it can be 3 into 10 power 10 but 3 into 10 power 8 i am considering because 3 into 10 power 8 centimeters per second and if you want to write 10 power 10 then that will be a millimeter per second but if you observe lambda g we got it in centimeters so you need to take the c value in centimeters only so c value should be 3 into 10 power 8 centimeters per second divided by f what do we got f from the values we got the f as 11.35 into 10 power 9 so now we need to get lambda naught value it is 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 11.35 into 10 power 9 so i got a lambda naught value as 0 0.026 centimeters a lambda naught will be a centimeters or it can be in millimeters but we have taken c in centimeters so unit will be in centimeters so now we have lambda g we have lambda naught and here we have the formula formula for lambda c as c is equals to 2 into a where this a value is a fixed one and that a value can be 2.286 centimeters here a value will be 2.286 centimeters here a value is a fixed one now so just measure the lambda c 2 into 2.286 so that we are going to get it as 4.57 centimeters we have lambda naught and we have lambda g and now we have lambda c once if we have these three then we can easily calculate the phase velocity as well as guide velocity so what is the formula for phase velocity phase velocity is equals to lambda g into f we have lambda g that is 5 into f we have f that is nothing but 11.35 into 10 power 9 so we can just easily calculate it 5 into 11.35 into 10 power 9 and we got it as phase velocity rate of 56.75 into 10 power 9 this is what the value of phase velocity that we got and moving on to the group velocity what is the formula for group velocity it is phase velocity by c square we have the phase velocity value so you just substitute it 
fifty six point seven five into ten power nine by here it is c square. We already have the c value. So three into ten power eight whole square will be getting its value. So in this way. Uh, you can take uh, three or four combination of values, and you can consider any one combination. That means from one combination, if you are taking lambda g from one combination, means from the same combination you need to take the frequency, and by making use of that lambda g and f, we can calculate the remaining four parameters which are related to the wave gate. So with this, uh, we are done with the experiment, and we'll see the next experiment in the next video. Thank you.